Hi everybody, my name is Karen Fabian and I'm the founder of Bare Bones Yoga and thanks for taking a minute to watch this YouTube video here on my YouTube channel. So if you've been here before, you know that all of what I do for the most part is I talk about anatomy in the context of yoga and that's always a really important place to start, talking about the context because there are lots of different applications for the topic of anatomy. Certainly the most obvious one is in medicine. And then there are a lot of other movement-based therapists and professionals who need to understand anatomy. In the clinical setting, there are people like physical therapists and occupational therapists. And then in the exercise science world, there are people like massage therapists and personal trainers. And then in the yoga world, of course, there are yoga teachers. And I think it can be really helpful to think about the context within which you need to learn anatomy because that really forms just a, a really natural perimeter around the kinds of things you're going to need to know and within each topic how deep you're going to need to go in terms of knowledge. And so what I'm going to share with you today is something I have shared before. So if you've watched <clears throat> some of my other videos, this may be a bit of a repeat. However, I think it's really important because knowing what to know <clears throat> as a yoga teacher when it comes to the topic of anatomy really will guide the studying you do. And before I go into the different components, what I want to do is tell you what inspired this video. I had a conversation earlier this week with a teacher in my Facebook group on anatomy, and she was bringing up a particular book that she was reading that goes very much into a particular situation that might affect some of your students. And it has to do with compression between bones not necessarily from wear and tear that comes with age, which is natural, right, arthritic changes, um, but something else that might be creating that. Now, while this is definitely something that might be affecting some of your students, it's very, very niche, meaning it's a very small number, and it's something that if you were to study it as a yoga teacher, it would be really critical that you understand all the basics of anatomy long before you start to dive into these niche topics. And so this is something that inspired me to do a refresh on the kinds of things that you need to know as a yoga teacher. And when I say need to know, I mean you should be able to explain these to another teacher, to a student, to someone who knows nothing about yoga, who knows nothing about the body, clearly and understandably. This is not something that you should just be able to read and recite from memory. It should be really conversational for you. Because let's face it, when we're teaching, that's what we're doing. We're having a conversation about anatomy in the context of the movement practice known as yoga. So let's take a look. It doesn't matter if you can't see this sheet. I just used it really for guidance for me. So the first thing is key anatomical terminology. It's important you understand and be able to explain the different anatomical movements the body makes. So flexion and extension, internal and external rotation, dorsiflexion, supination, lateral flexion, all sorts of things like that. The next thing is anatomical position. What is anatomical position? What are the qualities of AP? And why do we even care about it as yoga teachers? The next thing is key bones. And notice I said key, so I don't mean all bones. Key joints and key muscles. So this is really where the deep dive occurs, at least within the context of the approach that I have here. This is where you're going into naming, you're going into identifying origin and insertion of muscles, talking about the function of the muscles, again, key muscles. From there, moving into muscles and poses. Because let's face it, if you don't know what the trapezius is, it's really impossible for you to speak to the trapezius when you're doing dolphin pose, right? It's just really, really hard to draw in a higher level piece of information if the basic knowledge isn't there. From there, moving into an understanding of fascia and the technique used in fat with fascia, which is myofascial release. And then from there, moving into the last three sections, which really applies what you've learned so far to yoga teaching. So things like uh, applying anatomy to teaching in different scenarios, identifying red flags and correcting them, offering modifications. Why in certain scenarios would you do that and what are you trying to prevent? and then sequencing. Now, I didn't necessarily write cues down here specifically. However, I want you to note that providing cues and providing sequencing 
ultimately is the way that all of this knowledge comes together. Because let's face it, as yoga teachers, our language, uh, what we know in terms of how we say it, is expressed in two ways, primarily. What we're offering people, the sequence, and how we're instructing them in the class, the cues. And so all of the knowledge you're accumulating primarily is there to be able to funnel into those two things. And the more you understand anatomy and can speak to it conversationally, the better your cues will be, the more understandable they will be, and the bigger impact you will make. Because it won't just be about what they're doing on the mat at that moment. You'll be sharing information that can also help them when they're off the mat. And that's one primary way that your impact can grow. So I hope you found this helpful, and I'd love to know what you think. Also, if you'd like to join this Facebook group I was referring to, just visit my website, barebonesyoga.com, and you'll see the link right on the home page to that Facebook group. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next video. Don't forget to click subscribe. Namaste.